Hey everybody, uh, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 155, and today we're going to be doing battle with Zed Zoe. And so Zed Zoe, this is an interesting deck. I've been doing battle with this over the past few days, and, and it's kind of tough for me to describe. I've gone through the intro a few times to try and uh, piece together what I wanted to say about this deck, and it's been it's been a bit of a struggle, all right? Uh, on, it's like on the one hand, you have a lot of these really nice Zoe combos, right? Zoe uh, wants you to be playing cards with different names. And so we have a handful of cards that do different name things. Wuju style generating what meditate, Sonic Wave generating uh, the re resonating strike. We have Gifts from Beyond generating all the various Ephelios weapons. Uh, and so we have a lot of uh, alternate named cards running all throughout the deck. But these are also pretty fantastic combat tricks, right? If we're using Wuju style, this is a, a bonus attack. Uh, the flip side boosts your health. Uh, things like Sonic Wave give Challenger somewhere, but then a plus two attack somewhere else. These aren't things that typically work that well with Zoe outside of just boosting up her level up ability, playing the 10 cards with different names. Uh, and that's where we have some of these other cards come in. And so Zed, uh, he's a champion, very happy to have uh, all of these additional combat stats. Zed loves to get bonus attack and get challenger and get all these extra abilities. And so uh, it starts to kind of tie everything together. Uh, once we're like, well, this deck, this card would be, you know, bad with Zoe, but good with Zed. This other one would be good with Zed, but bad with Zoe. Uh, nice little combos that start to tie each other together. Uh, and then we have some uh, support to ensure that our champions survive, running with things like Nopify and Moral Support and Deny. And so that's kind of like the first angle, right? We want to be playing these different lead card names. They're all combat tricks. We need some good combat focus because Zoe doesn't do that. Uh, so this Zed uh, helps tie it together. But there's some other, you know, kind of minor combos running around in here as well. Uh, the Darkened Lodestone is a card that I look to be as kind of a sleeper for one of the most powerful cards in the set. Uh, the front side of this gives a unit plus two, plus two. That unit then gets to support something permanently, plus one, plus one. Uh, these are both uh, abilities that work great with Zoe and Zed, making Zoe uh, a little more resilient in combat and uh, boosting whatever else is on board or with Zed uh, growing his stats, which will then, of course, grow the shadow. If the shadow is what's catching the support off of Zed, it's going to get kind of a double bonus as well. And so uh, we have lots of interesting and nice things running around there. But uh, if we look at this as the expensive side, the big uh, eight mana game ending card in Harazi, uh, a lot of these combat tricks come back to being kind of nice. And so uh, Harazi supporting the unit, the unit grows to Harazi's side and then also gains his keywords. And so uh, if we take all of these combat tricks that we had intended for Zed, slap them onto Harazi, uh, we're getting double or triple value out of those combat tricks. Uh, and then in terms of making uh, Zoe combat relevant, Harazi uh, turning her into a 7-7 seven, seven elusive is quite a powerful deal. And so uh, lots of interesting and strong, powerful combos in here. It doesn't sound like a uh, champion pairing that should be that fantastic together, but uh, we've been having quite a bit of success with this, uh, and these cards are working quite nicely. Uh, to kind of round out the mix of these cards, uh, in terms of Zed support, we have both Esmuth to give him the permanent plus one, plus one on the support, Wandering Shepherd to put some items onto him. And again, these are cards that work with Zoe. Some of these games will turn out to just be uh, on a super big elusive style. Uh, and so boosting all of our elusives is quite strong. Uh, and the Esmuth and the Shepherd spreading out those equipments helps in that theme uh, quite a bit. And then the last card to mention here is the Sparklefly. This is one that uh, if you have your Zoe flipped, giving your entire team elusive and lifesteal should be a game ender. Uh, and this is, of course, just a nice, good board stall unit, a fantastic place to slap a piece of equipment or put a plus one, plus one on, uh, a nice piece of versatility to round out the deck. And so uh, I think it'll be a little bit more clear as we get into the game and talk about the deck uh, as, as you get to see it in action. It, it's kind of odd to talk about up front where you're like, yeah, I'm playing a Zoe build around sometimes and a Zed build around sometimes and just elusive sometimes. There's like all of these minor synergies that come to come to that kind of come together to make a real nice and cohesive deck, uh, but not so much one that uh, is immediately apparent in terms of what is happening. And so, uh, more importantly, though, more than any reason to how to play a deck, any kind of guide, uh, the best guide, the best advice I can give you uh, is to pay to win. And so we do have to come out here and pay the pay to win price. Uh, I was looking to pay on uh, Wuju style. This is one. Uh, it's a card that comes out and generates another card. It's pretty much double value uh, in terms of turning things premium. And so... I feel pretty good with that decision there. <laughs> and all right. So 
we've got the deck loaded up, our premiums are premiumed out, prismatic as they can be. Let's go ahead and jump on into battle. And so, uh, yeah, I think this has a, a reasonable place in the meta. The way I'm kind of looking at the meta right now is, uh, do we feel okay about just saying, uh, I'm going to ignore pirates? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and once you once you've kind of like made that decision, you've said that you're okay with like, all right, I'm just going to say pirates isn't a deck. Uh, it really kind of opens up the world and what you're able to play. And uh, this is one of these decks that just gets murdered by pirates, but uh, has pretty good matchups against the rest of the format. And so uh, here, in terms of this opener, we're looking for Zoe's and Zeds. We didn't find any, so we're just going to take a hard mulligan. Look for our super powerful champions here. Found both a Zoe and a Zed. Not a bad deal. And so we're up against, uh, I would assume, it's the timelines. That's what we typically see uh, as we're up against uh, P and Z Freylord. There's no, uh, the, there's no, what you might call it, Trundle involved. So it may not necessarily be a timelines deck, but uh, it is what I would expect. So well, the, the reason I'm kind of uh, branching out with this, Thermogenic Beam is typically the only removal spell that these decks play. They usually play between uh, one and two copies, uh, but it's usually just like one or two beams, one or two mystic shots, one or two aftershocks. They usually just play four or five removal spells. I feel pretty safe just throwing out the Zoe uh, and making them have it. So it turns out he had it there. It's not that big of a deal. Now we're going to be ready to get uh, fired up with uh, round two. <laughs> we're going to drop our Zed and see if we can't uh, get some work done with him. So, welcome to the board, my friend. Let's see if he wants to spend any mana. I'm kind of okay with just opening here. I'm also kind of okay with throwing a Dark and Lodestone on him. But uh, we'll see if opponent wants to come out with a, an Aftershock or something to try and take him down. Give us a little bit more info in terms of what we're getting into. All right, he didn't bring it, so let's just go ahead and send Zed in. Uh, I, I feel like we're kind of safe here, uh, as long as we let this two mana bank. Like, we can roll into next turn. Uh, get the... Oh boy, he just lets Zed flip. That's bold. Uh, but we can roll into the next turn and, and just maybe drop a Sparkle Fly, keep the Nopify uh, up for protection. Seems kind of okay. Got a kitty out here, this dumb guy. This guy, he's been he's been living an interesting life here. I got, I got a new fan. Uh, it's just a small fan, probably yay big, you know, it's not a big thing. But uh, I have it like blowing this way, like it goes... Uh, from my right side to my left, and it's down on the floor. He, like, feels the wind stream or something, but can't hear it. <laughs> and so he just, like, walks up to him, and he's like, oh, fuck, there's something here. And he, he keeps freaking out every time he walks in here. He's been a little scared to come in here the past few days since I started to get the fan going. And he's like, oh, you poor guy, you're so dumb. You're so dumb, little creature. <laughs> but he is a delight. I will give him that. All right, here comes the removals from the opponent. Very expensive way to go about things. Uh, I'm going to spend the Nopify because uh, we, we kind of get double usage out of a lot of these cards, right? We can play Wuju style uh, to give bonus attack and protect a unit to where the, uh, the, the Nopify can only be used for the protection end of things. Now we get Overwhelm onto Zed. Quite strong. Now, since he let our Zed flip on the last attack, the Living Shadow is going to get the Overwhelm as well. All right, so how big do we want to go in here? Like, I'm not particularly worried about any of these champions coming down. I'm kind of interested in dropping the Lodestone onto the Shepherd. Uh, and then <laughs> I just got to concede, it's like, yeah, this is not, not a good spot. The Timeline's Trundle decks don't uh, handle the Zed too well because their removal suite's so bad. But I was thinking, uh, well, if he's going to play like a burn spell, that's kind of the only way he has built up. Uh, as a means to take down our Zed, we could probably pretty safely put the equipment onto our uh, onto our Weapon Master and then uh, just use the, the defensive combat tricks if we need to survive a, a beam or something. All right. Up against Thresh, Thresh Kindred. It can be a little bit more challenging for our Zoes in this match, right? They tend to play a lot of... Uh, hate spikes and and vile feasts. It's a lot more challenging to just throw Zoe down on the first turn and slam her in, uh, as to where in that previous match we were uh, not quite ready to do that. But I, I think we'll see how it goes. We'll see if they play a one drop. Uh, I'm definitely going to just wait until the second turn. Uh, so if we say drop Zoe, 
opponent plays Vile Feast, then we'll get to draw the card off of the Pale Cascade. So she'll die to a Hate Spike if he's got one. I have to assume at this stage that they don't, but I don't feel there's a real reason to drop a Star Chart here. We're not doing a ton uh, with, with the cards that this will be generating, and then if we want, we can always just play it next turn. There's no big hurry uh, to get a super cool Star Chart onto the board. A little scary, though. We're going to have to do a bit of work with these sparkle flies in terms of uh, protecting our health. Without a, a Zed or a quick attack equipment or something, uh, the opponent's units are just bigger than ours. All right, well, I at least feel like our units are pretty safe now with the with the Nopify turning up. Let's, let's see if he adds anything to the board before we attack. I'd like to... Uh, to, to get the Wuju style in on the Sparkle Fly, just so we can gain a little bit of health. Now, ideally, at the end of this combat, we'll be able to uh, just play the Meditate onto something so that we get the additional Zoe spell. But if we have to Nopify a, a, a Black Spear or something, I don't feel like that's uh, abysmally bad. Okay, the Meditate's safe now. He can still Hate Spike, but Hate Spike's not big enough to kill Zoe. So he's developing a pretty big board here. We do have some options with like Gifts from Beyond uh, in terms of not just completely dying in these combats. And then here we can also do stuff, say, like uh, Star Chart and then Pale Cascade onto the Sparkle Fly and then just block the 2-2. And that'll prevent some of this damage. We got to get a little bit of that noise going. Pick up a trickster. Can we ever just win the game next turn? I, I think we're going to be a little bit far away, but it's worth a uh, worth a check. So this will be like three, four, five, six. Not going to have an additional eight damage in here. I think it's still the unit that we want, though. Okay, only taking ten. Not so bad. That's not very nice, dude. Not very nice. Mm, okay. R.I.P. Zoe. Oh man, he gets to cancel out the lifesteal as well. <sighs> That's kind of crappy. All right, well, let's see. Let's see how much we can pick up here. Uh, the, the Shepherd's Authority, I saw all of those stats, but it's going to make our units uh, not so hot on the defensive end of things. So we can make a decision now. Like, I'm not super interested in killing in any of his units, right? He's got the full board, and he's just going to start overriding stuff. I don't think we need to uh, use the Entrancing Lure. I'd say realistically at this spot, we just need to be getting dudes down. Like, we, we, if we can survive this next turn, we may find ourselves in a spot to where uh, we can win the game on our following attack. Have run out of combat tricks, so... A little scary. We have the Gifts from Beyond to maybe throw a unit on the board. But I would imagine that he's going to be open attacking here. Those imaginations came true. All right. So we can't survive against any of these dudes. A little unfortunate. This is going to be our easy block. Just preventing five damage from the big boy. Uh, I think we want to moral support our 3-2 Sparkle Fly. And then let's just see where that gets us. Gets us to neg 10, so we need one more block. This would take us down to neg... Take us down to four total. Okay. Probably as good as that's going to get. Still preserving our two elusives. He's going to do something mean, isn't he? Takes us to one. Sure. All 
Okay, so no reason to add Zed here. He's not He's not going to do anything. He's never attacking through on this board. Uh, do we want to load stone? If we just play it next turn and get to attack, that that's the eight damage we need. Ooh, you're only seven. Uh-oh, dude's, dude's emoting. Let's play it as an equipment. So this gets us the eight damage we need, assuming he doesn't have an atrocity or some kind of drain. Sure. Okay. I feel like that's about as good as that could have gone, though. Uh, we survived just enough to get the, the lethal ready, and he had his maybe one of atrocity to close out the game. I feel like that was pretty good. On to the next one. We just need more dumb cats in the video. We we win these games when the dumb cats show up. It's just... <laughs> without them, it's a little bit more challenging. All right, so what do we got here? We got a copy of Zoe. Let's get rid of this other stuff. Look for some uh, some better early game plays. Esmuth is a wonderful addition. All right, we got all the goods here. So I can't quite remember the removal suite this dumb deck plays. Uh, they, I, I assume that they play Mystic Shots. There's a good chance that Zoe just gets Mystic Shot here. But we are still building up a pretty decent uh, elusive offering in our, our double Esmeth along with the Darkened Lodestone. And th these decks are pretty horrible in terms of interactivity. And so not a great chance for them to bring down a lot of relevant units. You can't hit Challenger on a... Um, you, you can't hit Challenger on a Weaponsmith, right? You, I guess you can you can play your two-coster and hope you hit, but there's no Challenger improvise, right? And so if he's not able to uh, come down and interact with us, then we just go, LOL, here's all my elusives. <laughs> it's, it's pretty tough for them to deal with. That's a big boy, but sure. All right, here's Esmuth. We're going to drop a lodestone as well. We want to be giving a plus two attack to the Sparklefly this turn. That's, oh, fuck me. Well, at least it's not going to die, but really wanted to get these additional stats down. And our chime just whiffed. Alright, well he snapped through that one pretty quick, so, so maybe the sparkle fly is going to be safe. I would assume that if he's playing cards like um, uh, cards like Aftershock, and he had it in his hand, he would have just let out with it. Alright, these units are pretty big. Now Zed's ready to party. I think we might just have to trade away our Zed here. Let's see what he drops. I mean, depending on how big this unit is, we can look to double stun with the Gifts from Beyond. So if we say double stun this Coastal Defender, well, I mean, he's not even at lethal yet. He's only dealing 15 here. But I don't think the Zed is ever dealing damage this game. So if he's not going to deal damage, what's our angle the rest of the way? Probably just play a Darkened Lodestone this turn and then pop off with a bunch of spells. So how much damage are we at, right? We're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 with the Wuju style, uh, up to 12 with Gifts from Beyond. So we're going to be short of the lethals. So if he gets if he gets too clever with his attacks, we just won't block. Yeah, it's so tempting to just not block, but he's got he's got this eight health bro over here. I can't imagine that uh, the combat goes particularly well. All 
right? So we can gain a ton of health off of this sparkle fly. The question is like, how big do we want to go? I, I think, like, where does this get us? We gain four, he falls to seven. We need to spend some of this mana this turn. I, I'm kind of leaning towards, it's like, well, what if we give the sparkle fly plus two attack and then just summon a rando unit with the gifts from beyond or play double stun with gifts from beyond double stuns probably a little bit safer and then we'll still have uh the the, the meditate in hand should we need to gain a bit of health another uh, thing is we can just start blocking with our esmuths and and kind of count on this sparkle fly to carry us the rest of the way no <laughs> one more one more you want to say about this dumb shit with with the lifesteal just no And Jax. Okay. As it stands, Dum Dum here in the middle can't attack. Uh, so if we're just going to take like 11 from his units and, and block the Coastal Defender, that doesn't sound terrible. And we discard Zed. All right. We need to play this challenger thing onto our uh, equipped unit. Now we get to draw a card. Hmm. Denies. A little juicy. He, importantly, he has the Brutal Hunter, but it can't kill our Sparkle Fly. Don't think we want to cycle again. He needs to... Oh, he's got a, a Pan of Pain for the Brutal Hunter. Fortunately, we have the combat tricks. Bringing in the fancier. Oh man, I don't have my water. This is a perfect time to hydrate. That looks like a lethal, doesn't it? So if we block this 9, that's neg 15 coming at us. I'm surprised you didn't deploy more onto the sparkle fly. Can block Reg. Why didn't that gain any more health? What am I missing with this? Well, okay then. <laughs> Alrighty. We won't block Reggie. What did I what am I missing with this sparkle fly block though? We aren't Okay, that put us back up to ten. Maybe I just I read into the, the labeling wrong. Hmm. Interesting, I tell you. Right, come in for those sweet damages. No, oh, thank you. Rip him. GG timelines guy. All right. <laughs> you think you're good at not interacting? Let me let me teach you a lesson, my friend. 
Okay. And so, I mean, like the timelines that got me to where I wanted to be talking about with this meta, right? We, we, uh, I, I struggle with these things in terms of like looking at a game like Magic and saying it's like, okay, well, here's, there, there's this kind of like delineation of aggro decks, mid range decks, control decks, and combo decks, right? Uh, there will occasionally be something a little bit weird uh, to where you'll have like a combo control deck or an aggro combo deck or whatever. But for, for the most part, uh, things could just be sorted out into those kind of specific buckets. And it was like a, a fair descriptor of what most of the decks were. And so there wouldn't be like a ton of difference between like a red deck wins aggro deck and a Boros aggro deck and some kind of like zombies aggro deck, right? And so um, it's not entirely like that once we find our way over to Runeterra, you know, this fucking thing. This, uh, this has been like the nemesis of the new Zoe match and them having access to this stupid fucking card. <laughs> but um, no, it's like... Yes, there's like various flavors of aggro decks in Runeterra, but uh, they, they don't exactly feel the same. And uh, and so where it's like, the, the way I've kind of like started to look at some of these things now is we have decks like your, your classic aggro decks, like there's not a lot of difference between uh, like Pirates and Elise Darius. Like these decks are like all Noxus based aggro burn decks and it works there, but... I have a tough time describing uh, something like a uh, uh, like a concurrent timelines deck, right? At its heart, it's probably just some kind of like mid rangey deck, but it, it's like a, a little tough for me to say. But the, what we're seeing a lot of in this current meta is we have a lot of decks like concurrent timelines that um, interesting. Um, there are just like stats, right? At its core, that's what concurrent timelines is. You're basically playing a one mana spell that gives all your units for the rest of the game plus two plus two, uh, and then if you're, you know, feeling feeling spicy, it gives them plus two plus two in a keyword. Like that's essentially what concurrent timelines does. But oh shit, we can't nopify out of this. This is bad. I, I thought we were going to be okay because we were going to get to attack uh, with the Esmuth, but no, that twisted fate's gonna gonna ace us. You can't nopify uh, skills. Uh, but um, uh, there's, you know, the deck likes the timelines, which are just a bunch of stats. There's deck like the Orn decks, which are just a bunch of stats. Uh, that's kind of like one piece, and they're all terrible at interactivity. They're just winning the games through putting a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of stats on board. Uh, and a lot of the control decks that we're starting to see come out of the format uh, are similar as to where uh, they, they aren't your classic Shadow isles -y kind of control decks with a bunch of removal spells and stuff. Uh, they're out here with. Um, I want a combat trick with this hand. I, I like. I, I like the Zoe into Esmuth, but uh, I'd like to be able to protect Zoe if we can, and not have to be all in with her. Uh, but we're, we're starting to see a lot of Ezreal Kennens and a lot of uh, these Ionia-based decks that just put a unit on the board and uh, block. You know, this is the way that the Sun Disk used to work. They would just play a bunch of shitty units on the board, block forever, and then. On turn nine, they just go, oops, I win. And there's not a, a ton of difference between seeing a uh, an Ezreal Kennen and seeing a, uh, a Sun Disk deck. They all essentially just do the same thing. You just stall out the game with ground-based units until turn eight, and then you just win. Uh, but decks like the Zoe Z deck are able to punish that, right? Uh, if your uh, methods of interactivity are just playing homecomings and ground-based blockers like Eye of the Dragon, uh, this deck can just go around all of it and just say, oh, you're not going to interact. Cool. I'm not going to either, <laughs> but I, I'm going to do this whole not interacting thing a little bit better than you're doing it. And so, excuse me, I, I think once you're able to just say, like, all right, well, I'm going to ignore pirates, uh, decks like uh, like Zoe Z really have a spot to, to slide in the meta. Fuck, that's annoying. I hate it when we miss on our, our chimes. Should be okay enough here, though. We're doing this let's not interact thing kind of okay. He's coming in for six. Uh, we could, like, block this turn with moral support. Uh, I don't think, like, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting excited about that, but maybe this is the way to just stall forever. If we pass... Block the Viper Worm with Zoe, play Moral Support, and get a takedown. I think this is good. This buys us a ton of time. I 
Look at that. Combat Zoe coming at you. <laughs> Most aggressive Zoe 2022. Just coming out here and fucking shit up. She's about to be 4-4. Look out, my friend. Look out. Is that a time for, like, a laser beam? It's probably time for a laser beam. Stupid manifests coming onto the board. <laughs> Not cool, dude. Not cool. We're the ones out here trying to have fun. Bringing my flyers at you. That's what elusives are, right? They have flying. No, that's not cool at all. Number one, I, I think uh, thematically elusive is is way better conceptually than flying, right? Flying, uh, I, I get it. You're in a fantasy game. You got, ooh, I got dragons. Dragons are flying. But... Like, what if you're just really fast, right? What is the Flash? Would, would the Flash, uh, the, the DC character, not be considered to be elusive because he just zigs and zags faster than you're capable of dealing with? That, that sounds fairly elusive to me. But he doesn't fly. I mean, maybe he does fly. D DC comic characters are all fucking stupid. But <laughs> he, he technically doesn't have the gift of flight, uh, to the, the best of my knowledge. And so... Uh, I, I think the Runeterra people deserve a, a plus one for proper naming of abilities. At any rate, what do we got going on here? We're going to have to, like, trouble bubble this turn. We just don't have anything happening. And so whatever his biggest unit is, we'll see if we can trouble bubble down. We can maybe get the combat cook here, but... Oh, an 11-11, huh? That's, that's pretty cool. You're not supposed to be able to generate this card according to what Riot says, but we all know how that goes. <laughs> we all know how that one goes. Riot came out and specifically said, we're not going to allow any... Well, it, I'm pretty sure they said that they wouldn't allow any cards that didn't have play abilities. Uh, that's at least how it works with... Um, how it works with what's-her-name. Uh, Nora and the, the portals. The portals can't generate play abilities, but I guess you can just generate anything with a uh, uh, with a concurrent timelines. But that feels fair, you know? You play your your four mana unit, you get a 7-7, seven, seven, and then you put an equipment on it. That's... that's we're having fun today. <laughs> we're having fun. Alright. What do we got in here? I was like... Uh, I was initially thinking last turn that it would be cool to have Equinox because we could just Equinox the, the Crocolith, but that's not how the game works at all. If you Equinox it, nothing's going to happen. Uh, so let's pick up a Trickster. Uh, how far away from Lethal are we? We have three from Esmeth, seven from Zoe. The Trickster gets us up to ten. Up to twelve with Momentous Choice. I don't... Feel good about Entrancing Lure getting us a kill. Maybe we'll get a good cycle. This Deny is not doing anything. We made it. Yay. What our stuff did it. So let me let me double double count this. That's ten. So we can Entrancing Lure, but we'd have to hit a one drop. So we, we have three cards that we could potentially hit. Two copies of Wuju style, one copy of Momentous Choice. But, I mean, if we're not going to play Nopifies, then I think we might as well just go for it. Give an ally Challenger. That's onto Esmeth. Oh, 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 oh. Did we do it? Did we do it? Let me double check that math. Oh, and the Zoe flip. I, I calculated that in there as well. I knew we were going to hit it. But with the Zoe flip, we wouldn't have even needed a uh, needed that extra hit. Mm. Fuck him up. <laughs> Fuck your dumbass deck, bro. <laughs> That's what you get for that stupid shit. Concurrent timelines. Get that out of our game. God, I hope it gets nerfed into oblivion. I, I, 
I'm so excited. Like, I hope that guy just decides he's never going to play that stupid deck again. If you have a game like that to where you hit the ancient crocolith and still lose, then you 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 can't be feeling good about the day. I hope I just broke his phone. <laughs> Is that going to be one of those games? Dude just chucks his phone across the room. <laughs> Shit. But no, my thing with concurrent timelines, uh, this is where I'll stop, is it just takes way too long. Uh, it, I, I don't like that you have to sit around and wait while your opponent decides what to improvise and they decide what to manifest and then the, you have to go to the next turn and what do I manifest? Now what do I pick with the concurrent timelines? It's pretty abysmal uh, sitting through all of it. But all right, we're up here against Poppy Tarek. This should be a, a, a pretty shitty matchup. Uh, they, they should have the edge in this. They have a lot, lot, lot of interactivity, and we don't play well into interactivity. We want to be playing decks like Concurrent Timelines that think it's a good idea to play one removal spell. And so uh, I was I, I just assumed this one was going to be over pretty fast. <laughs> but it, it seems like opponent has uh, a fairly top-heavy draw. Wouldn't be surprised to look at their hand and see a hand of like a... Um, like a, a Taric and a Concerted Strike and a Mountain Sojourner is just like a, a big, big, big pile of expensives. Because that's the way this deck is starting to play out now, uh, opposed from how it looked back, um, back during Seasonals. So how do we feel about this Poppy? We can, uh, say, play Gifts from Beyond and just stun her. I don't, I don't, I'm not excited about stunning the Poppy. I am a little bit more excited about stunning the Fleet Feather Tracker. And so if he just wants to attack with Poppy into Zed, we're up to a decision. Probably just going to take three damage, but we don't have to worry about him getting, like, free hooks into Esmuth. So where are you at? Would we rather just play Calibrum? And just kill her? Hmm. He would need both, like, Sharp Sight and Ranger's Resolve to get out of a Calibrum. I think I'm okay with that. He has to burn through a lot of mana. That would also mean he probably couldn't attack with Poppy at that point. Right? If we're just going to block her with Zed and say LOL. Alright. And so, kind of in this space, I, I think the only thing to worry about would be... we like I think we have all the time in the world with both of these denies. He can't make his big, super high-powered plays. Let's just give Zed Challenger. We don't draw cards off of this, right? Nothing's equipped. But... We get to take down the Poppy, punch in six damage, and then bank up a bunch of mana. So if he plays like a Mountain Sojourners and then goes into next turn and plays Taric, we can still take the hit for like eight or ten or whatever that amount is, but we'll be lined up with Deny uh, to try and, and shut them down. He probably just play Sparklefly, right? Well, if he has a Concerted Strike here, it could be a little bit scary. He doesn't have it anymore. Yeah, I just like banking this mana. No slowing down. Easy for you to say. Okay. So our Zed is at risk on this board. Let's add Sparkle Fly. Uh, I assume uh, he he's going to want to to play a uh, a rally, but. I think this is fine here. We take six. The Zed gets challenged. If he wants to play a rally, we deny. And then we have a fresh Zed for next turn. Okay. You have supported something this game. Then I guess the other thing to kind of watch out for here is I, I don't want to lose our... Well, I want to play our equipment on the next turn, right? On our next attack. And so we need this thing to die. But I still want to get it out here and equipped and on the board this turn. So we'll see if we can't just trade out Esmuth next turn.
I'm gonna deny it, dude. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm, go I'm gonna deny it. So we got our six attack Zeds. Perfect. Ranger's resolve. Okay, so he can't. Uh, uh, he he can't play rallies anymore this turn. That would be the the scary thing that he could be bringing forth. Uh oh, you better decide fast, my dude. Better decide fast. Not worried about his Esmith. Looks like we can't kill it anyways, but taking down the Taric is big. Okay. And then remember, in this combat, we want our Esmith to die. Right, we ideally hang on to Sparklefly. Well, Shadow Shift is a way to get the Esmith back to our hand now. Um, do we ever do we ever just Shadow Shift preemptively? It's too slow. Okay. And Poppy. That's a little scary. I wasn't expecting more units to come down. I think we're still okay. He's only got one challenger. So our goal is going to be to kill Esmuth. And that's it. That'll that'll be the end of the day. Alright. We want to kill his Esmuth and get the, the item back in our hand. This only says Neg 18 coming in with this block. I ain't scared of that. Okay? Did the mathematics, and that's even less. <laughs> that's even less. So let's see. Just block. And block. And put a barrier on our Zed. And we can come over here and shadow shift uh, our other elusive. So we take a bit of damage, kill the sojourners. Esmuth, you fought hard, you fought valiantly, but you're not going to make it. We just have to pass. Can we win if we just pass? Uh uh, I messed that mana up by one. We needed to play the momentous choice in there. Should have should have stopped and done a little bit of those mathematics things everybody's talking about. I think we're still okay, but that was a little sloppy. What happens if we let him rally? Right? As much as this, it's way too much. Okay. I guess the other thing to watch out for is we didn't actually kill his Esmuth. And so uh, that that does limit us in terms of killing with an elusive next turn. So I guess that's okay. Let's see if he just came out and immediately drew something nasty. <laughs> the the Broadwing, okay, the Broadwing's manageable. All of our units are must blocks at this point. So he's just gonna lose Probably everything but Poppy here. Together, stranger. Are you the one? Okay. Oh man, he does have this opportunity. What can he get a plus two attack out of an Esmuth and just open kill us? 
That was scary. <laughs> it was like, did we really punt that one that hard? Gotta pay a little bit more attention. But yeah, that that game that matchup should be miserable. Uh, that's that's why whenever you look at win rates and uh, you wonder why something is only a sixty percent favorite and it feels like it should win every time, that. <laughs> the, that uh, that deck and scouts and pirates have all the tools that they need to just come in and obliterate what we're doing here but that guy had a, a bit of a slow draw uh, had a bit of a clunker there and didn't quite uh, have enough to take it to the end i'm kind of interested in poppy Tarek as well in terms of playing uh this equipment whatever this thing is called the darkened lodestone uh there's a lot of interesting possibilities in there uh, in terms of uh providing supports for uh, for both Tarek and then loading up Tarek in the later turns or making uh, the, the dude just gigantic through Mountain Sojourners. Like, there's lots of interesting support uh, combos uh, if you're looking to, to kind of go that route. I, I'm, like, very interested in the likes of both... Um, I'm interested in the likes of both, uh, like, that kind of Tarek deck and then also Pantheon. I think Pantheon has started to make a bit of a, a, a rise in the format, and he hasn't been been catching a, a lot of internet attention, but I feel like uh, Pantheon, Tarek, Yumi might have finally got the final tool that it needs to be a real deck again uh, with the addition of the Darkened Lodestone. But all right, onward and upward up against Alawi Gwen. It's been a while since we've seen our friend Alawi. Here's your new friend Zed. <laughs> you got you got any answers to this? Interesting. I was not expecting to see Salter come out of this deck. So we could have looked to say play a Dark and Lodestone to boost our Zed this round. I feel like a little bit better just banking this and pushing forward uh, on the board. So, Malefic Spear. So he plays a unit, the unit gets the plus two, plus two, and the fearsome, and then the spear goes back to hand. Is that what we're gonna see out of this? Hmm. Okay. Things happened. <laughs> a lot of a lot of things just went down there. I, I was curious. I, I was leaning towards the Equinox since we can just Equinox down the Tentacle and then not have to worry nearly as much this turn, but are we now scared of this Alawi? Um, I think this is okay to uh, let Alawi go, uh, but how do we get the win around it? It's tough for Zed to deal 9 damage. We can, like, give this Weapon Master Challenger and then hook Alawi out of combat, but we're going to have to deal with her eventually. I don't think we can deal with both of these, though. I'm just going to go with the Equinox uh, shrinking up the Tentacle. So it, like, can attack this turn, but it's only going to be a 2-2 with Alawi. And then that gives us time to put a uh, equipment onto Zed. And then we can decide next turn if we really want to push after this Alawi uh, with Zed, since he can potentially take it down. We can get plus four attack off the Wuju style, plus six with Momentous Choice, plus eight with Sonic Wave. Uh, I know we don't have that much mana, but we have the tools to potentially uh, take her down. It's already got quick attack. Scout's quite good with Zed, but we just need to get all the bonus attack this round. I mean, he's probably going to be big enough to be a forced block. But what's going into next turn? We'll have six mana. So if we want to say uh, Resonating Strike plus... Resonating... That's six for all these cards, right? Three from the strike. Four, five, six. We can scout this. I guess the, the card to worry about here is going to be Crumble, but we can we can at least do some nasty stuff before the Crumble has a chance to come down.
Are we just all in at this point? <laughs> do, do we go ahead and play the second one before uh, the Zed Shadow comes out? Uh, let's wait. Let's do it. Let's do for a laser beam, right? Pretty cool. <laughs> Naga Kaboro surrounds us. Get that out of here. GG, my dude. That's what life's all about. Just going all in on Zed. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Another thing Riot said, Scout is too good of an ability to be generated. We're not going to let cards generate Scout. In comes Improvise. <laughs> Whoopsies. Whoopsies. Slip through. All right. Our last match of the series up against Pirates. Uh, it's... It's good to at least see uh, the Nightmare matchup come up once. And so I, I think we'll hang on to Zed, look for some of our cheaper plays. Um, we, we need to find our lifesteal to, to get through this. But as you can imagine, hands like this do not uh, do not scare pirates as he's going to drop a, a one drop into our nothing. <laughs> he's going to drop uh, a, either two more ones or a two. Oh, Ooh, that was nice. I appreciate that. Just going for value, absolutely. I don't think we'd get a, get away with that in a lot of uh, higher ranked matches. But now we can get Zed going. Uh, this does give us some opportunity. Let's say we attack with Zed and he decides to no block and let him flip. And then if we swing around to our next attack uh, and get to spread life steal across both copies of Zed, that's that's pretty huge. That's how you win a game, my friends. That's how you win a game. So if we wanted to, we can technically just block with Zed here and then play the other one. Doesn't mess with our mana too much. We only have access to, to one mana this turn. All right, so we block with Zed. Take some damage. Okay, get this misfortune out of here. The thing that worries me for next turn, we need to see how much mana he spends. If he doesn't spend all of it, oh no, he's going to have six mana next turn anyways. We have to worry a little bit about a uh, tentacle strike, whatever, Riptide Sermon. That could cause some problems, but uh, I'll feel a little bit better if we get to come out and just gain 10 health and cause some problems. I guess... New question, right? Can we ever just lethal this turn? Uh, if we say spend the the four mana to to pick up Infernum, our Zed is going to put Overwhelm onto both, right? So we can do. Let's see. That's a four mana play, so we'd have four left over. So we could give five, six, seven, eight, nine. This would be four, six with Infernum. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 22 in total, and he could block for 6. That's 22 minus 6. That's like 16. Okay, let's start doing it. We can still, like, kind of pivot out if we have to. Um, but we've just given up on the potential of the lifesteal play. I think if he plays a Riptide Sermon here, yeah, we'll, we'll switch to, to Wuju Sile. Is that... Or would we rather kill his Misfortune? Right, we can kill Misfortune and then he probably has... Oh, no, hang on. Hang on. This is six. 
Hail Cascade's gonna be like the efficient way here, right? It survives this dumb card. Gets us up to seven. These momentous choices aren't doubled because we aren't equipped this turn, right? But we can give him, we can get him up to ten now. That's still lethal. Right, we're we're coming in for twenty, and he can only block six. That's fourteen. I know I'm not the world's greatest mather, but <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that math adds up. Mm, that's a 14er. Nice. And so, uh, I, I I don't want to, to hate on Star Platinum too hard, but I feel like uh, the, 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 the strategy you're typically looking for with pirates, especially in a matchup like this, is not playing for value. Uh, and we really got away with something there on that turn two to where he opened attacked and just played the single pirate with the bonus stat. Uh, uh, maybe he only had one mana there, one mana worth of cards to play there and felt like that was okay. But uh, I, I feel like any two drop or a double one drop there would have been ultra, ultra ideal. Maybe he just had a really awkward hand because he did play two misfortunes that game and have Riptide Sermon. And so that's all pretty expensive and maybe he just didn't have it. But, uh, you know, that's how you, that's how you steal a win against pirates. <laughs> that was enough to uh, push us on up into the lands of diamond, take down a, another bad match on the day. I assure you that pirates match is not good. I feel like that pirates match went uh, exactly how I was trying to showcase it to you in that, uh, oh, we don't have a, we don't have a one drop. We don't have a two drop. Our opponent has played three units and now we're going to play Zed and our opponent's just going to play misfortune or two more units or something. But, uh, I, I feel like uh, that's just the, the standard way it should go, and it's just a terrible match. But, you know, this this does kind of, like, bring me back to the idea of why this deck was good, right? We're going to just say, okay, we're not playing Pirates. Uh, if you want to, say, carry this into Gauntlet or carry it into uh, whatever best-of-three tournament you like to play, that's a, that's a very valid strategy just to say we're going to ban Pirates. Uh, it does suck with this deck because it's going to get murdered by Kaisa and it's going to get murdered by Scouts and it's going to get murdered by Poppy Taric, but... Uh, you know, if you're willing to accept those bad matchups or accept that the uh, the Pirates plus Kaisa uh, matchup doesn't show up as frequently as it needs to, this is a, a fantastic deck to, to run out here and play. And then if you feel like people are going to be clever and bring triple timelines, this deck is fantastic to play. Uh, this deck works quite nicely against the likes of Ezreal Kennen and uh, Ari Kennen and uh, uh, whatever of those you know, dumb decks people are playing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I, I had fully intended on playing uh, Ezreal Kennen in this video. I, I started grinding through some matches to see if I could do it, and like it happened. I, I had to play the mirror match. It was up against Petash. Petash turned up. If you're not familiar with him, way better than I'll ever be at this game. But uh, I had to get into this like 35 to 40 minute grind fest against Petash, one, uh, and decided. I will never do that again for the rest of my life. And so <laughs> I'm not going to be playing any Ezreal Kennen. I hope you aren't looking for it. It's not going to be here. But uh, it, it is a, a fair matchup for this kind of deck. Those decks that are doing that kind of thing, right, as to where we're just going to put down blockers. Uh, we're going to try and tempo off your big guy with a bounce spell. And then I'm just going to do my thing on, like, turn nine and win the game. They have a very tough time interacting with this when we just say LOL elusives, right? LOL, I have protection from your, your you know, singular burn spells. I can stop your homecoming. Your homecoming doesn't devastate me because my whole game plan isn't centered on a five-drop unit doing something. Uh, and so we have a lot of game against those decks. And so, you know, it's interesting. You have a lot of uh, potentially good matchups with this. Is this the, the best uh, build of this? And are all of the cards perfected? Probably not, but the concept here is still good. And so I, I have to think that in the... Uh, upcoming weeks until at least we look at a uh, a potential nerf to concurrent timelines that uh, at least the strategy I'd like to take is I'm just going to look to ignore pirates uh, and then look to our kind of classic strategy of uh, elusives, overwhelms, or uh, rallies. And that's the, the kind of typical answer to the likes of uh, the Ezreal Kennens and the likes of uh, all of the uh, Nami decks and everything while still holding and having game 
uh, against uh, concurrent timelines. But whew, man, that was a fun video. And that is going to do it for us today. And so hope everyone enjoyed the video. You learned how to boost your Z just a little bit better. Maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. Oh, this is busting me. Thank you for being here.